Hey, everybody. Good morning or good afternoon, I guess, depending on where in the world you are calling from. Um, I'm in Berkeley. Phil's actually in New York. So um, welcome, welcome to all of you who have joined us this morning for um, five steps to get your event planning business ranking on the first page of Google. Um, I'm Molly. I'm the one that you get all of those emails from and was introducing this call and you've been hearing from me um, more recently over the last couple months. So it's nice to connect with those of you who have decided to join the call and for those of you who will be checking out the replay of the call once it's over. Um, just going to hop in here and introduce Phil and then we'll get the party started. Um, so Phil is the founder and COO of Main Street ROI. And He's the one who leads the company's operations, and he's the primary creator of all of their training programs. Um, and in doing that, he's developed this crazy awesome expertise in online advertising, marketing analytics, sales funnel optimization. Uh, Phil's marketing thought leadership has been published on Forbes and Inc.com, MSN.com, and a bunch of other major business media outlets. Uh, he earned his Master of Engineering Management from the Thayer School of Engineering and Tuck School of Business, and his Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Engineering degrees from Dartmouth. And when he was at Dartmouth, uh, Phil started every game on the varsity football team as the defensive safety. So he's um, got the brains and the bronze, I guess. <laughs> um, and when he's not working, he enjoys barefoot running um, in Central Park and New York City. Um, um, that's awesome. I, I read Born to Run a couple years ago and totally loved the book. Um, and Phil's also a member of the Determination Running Team, where he raises money for the American Cancer Society by running road races in five boroughs of New York City. Um, he lives with his wife, Erin, and his daughter, Violet, and his son, Emmett, in Manhattan. So um, thanks for putting this together for all of our community, Phil. Um, I know I'm kind of pretty stoked to see what you have got going on here. So I'm just going to turn the floor on over to you so we can get, get it started. Perfect. Thanks, Molly. I appreciate the intro. And uh, I want to thank the Event Planners Association for organizing this, uh, this training. Again, we're going to be talking about the five steps to get your event planning business ranking on the first page of Google. And we will dive right in. We've got a lot to cover. Just some housekeeping to get out of the way here. If you're new to go to webinar, there's a, a questions box, and you can just type in your questions as we go. If anything is uh, you know timely and I, sh I need to address it right away or clarify something, just type that in there. I'll address it as I'm going through the presentation. If it can wait, we will have a live Q&A at the end. So uh, if I don't get to your question right away, don't worry. We'll we'll address that at the end. I always recommend you turn off distractions, shut down, definitely turn off your email, instant messenger, TV, uh, and certainly close out of Facebook. And then before we dive in, I did want to do a quick poll here to see who's on the line. So just a few questions here. The first one should be pretty straightforward, and it's just whether or not you're currently working with an SEO agency. Uh, obvious answers are yes or no and uh, in my experience uh, some agencies and consultants actually join our training so there is an option if you are uh, working in an agency or you are a consultant. All right, I will close that down. It uh, looks like the majority of people, 86%, are not doing anything uh, or not uh, working with an SEO agency. Some, uh, some folks are. Uh, next question here is just what's your current or anticipated monthly SEO budget? Uh, less than $500, 500 to 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000. So different uh, ranges there just to get a feel for the size of uh, your your marketing budget for SEO specifically. Looks like the majority here, less than 500, 73%, 25% are in the 500 to $1,000 range. I'm going to close out of that. <clears throat> and then last but not least, just to get a sense for what other digital marketing channels you're using. For example, Google AdWords advertising, 
or Bing advertising. Maybe you're using Facebook advertising, email marketing, social media, or it's possible you're doing something completely different, in which case uh, you can select other and just type your answer into the Q&A box. would be uh, curious to hear what everyone is using for their digital marketing. Actually, 42% using Facebook advertising. I'm surprised to see that. About 30% social media, 21% email marketing, and 7% Google AdWords advertising. All right, very interesting. I'm going to dive right in here. All right, so here's what we're going to cover. Some, uh, some important Google updates that you need to understand. It's really important to understand uh, how Google has evolved over the years because a lot of tactics that worked, let's say, two, three years ago, actually don't work anymore. And it's really important for you to know, uh, you know how Google has changed their algorithm because there have been a, a ton of updates. And because of those updates, what tactics no longer work and what you should be doing to get your website ranking higher. I'll specifically go three, through uh, three old school SEO tactics you must avoid. They'll actually get you into trouble. Then I'll talk about two tactics that'll get you ranked in as little as 30 days. That's because uh, when you learn about SEO, you'll find out that it can typically take several months depending on the competitiveness of the, the keywords that you're going after. Uh, but there are a couple tactics you can use to get ranked really quickly, and I'll, I'll go through those. I'll obviously go through the five rules you now need to follow. And I do have a gift for all of the attendees to help you get started today. Now, out of respect for your time, I do want to go through who this webinar is for. You'll get the most out of this if you have a website. That should be fairly obvious. We'll be talking about how to get your website ranked higher in Google. So I will assume you have a website. I'll also assume you provide top quality uh, products and services. You want to be recognized as the number one provider in your area. You want to know what it takes to get ranked number one, obviously. And most importantly, you're willing to take consistent action. And uh, this will be a theme throughout the presentation. There's no uh, set it and forget it solution. It does take consistent action month after month. This webinar is not for you if you're just trying to trick Google into giving you the number one spot. That's a common misconception in the SEO world that uh, getting your website ranked high is just about tricking Google. And again, that'll be another common theme in this presentation. It's not about tricking Google. It's actually about partnering with Google to make sure you're giving Google the information that they need to rank your website high. And lastly, uh, it's not for you if you just want to set it and forget it completely hands-off solution. Unfortunately, that's not the way uh, this works. Uh, there are some things you can do to see some pretty quick results, but then at, for a long-term strategy to actually maintain your rankings, you will need to uh, be consistent, and, and it does require work month after month. Now, Molly already introduced me, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll be quick here. Again, my name is Phil Frost. I'm the founder of Main Street ROI, and our business provides digital marketing training, like this training you're on today, as well as services. So we also provide search engine optimization services, uh, digital advertising, and email marketing services. And to date, we've helped over 2,000 businesses with their digital marketing, and my thought leadership has been featured in Forbes, Inc., Amex, as well as Mashable. And this is my favorite slide. Uh, I'm also the proud father of those cute kids. That is Violet on the right. She is almost four years old. She'll be four in, uh, in January, January 2nd. Uh, and that's my chubby son, Emmett. He's uh, just over a year and a half. And that's my beautiful wife, Erin. And as Molly mentioned, we live in uh, Manhattan on the Upper West Side. All right, so now I want to go through the brief history of Google. And again, it's really important to get this foundation to better understand what it takes to get your website to rank high. So way back in the day, there was a, a tool called AltaVista. 
or a search engine called AltaVista. And uh, back then, SEO or search engine optimization was really easy. Basically, all you had to do was uh, put the keyword that you wanted to rank for. Let's say you're trying to rank for event planner, or maybe you're trying to rank for event planner in NYC or New York City event planner, whatever that keyword is. You just need to put that keyword on your page more than anyone else is showing that keyword on their page, and you would likely be ranked as the number one website. Uh, because of that, it should be fairly obvious, the search results were full of spam. So there, there were just a ton of web pages showing up in the search results that really didn't belong, uh, to. they didn't deserve to be the number one website. They were just total, they could be completely irrelevant. You may remember uh, porn sites were infiltrating just normal searches. So it was kind of the wild, wild west for, for SEO. So that was AltaVista, one of the first search engines. And then around 1998, Google entered the market and they wanted to uh, basically provide a better search experience for everyone. They wanted to make sure that the best websites were showing at the top and the way they did that was they weren't just looking at the words on your website, they also were looking at other websites that were linking to your website. So let's say my website MainStreetROI.com links to your website. I have something on my, I write an article that says, hey, here's the best event planner in NYC, and I link to your website. Google would see that link, and that's basically a vote in your favor. Let's say you have uh, 50 more links from 50 other businesses saying that you are uh, a high quality event planner in New York City. That's a strong signal for Google to say, hey, this site deserves to be ranked high. So it's a pretty good uh, you know, way to look at how to rank websites um, because those people link to other websites uh, when they like that particular website. And because of that, Google search results were uh, just way better than all of the other search engines out there. And uh, Google eventually became the number one search engine. And the last point I want to make here is that Google, Google's whole business depends on search ad revenue. You may not be aware of this, but the vast majority of the revenue comes from people going to google.com and clicking on the ads in the search results. And people go to google.com because Google has the best search results because of their, their algorithm. And when you put that all together, uh, any type of spam or irrelevant search result really threatens Google's business model, threatens their entire business, because if I go to Google and I do a search for an event planner in New York City and I get a result that uh, isn't even an event planner, that's frustrating for me, I'm likely to then go to go use Bing or Yahoo or some other search engine that I could go find. So with that in mind, Google spends a lot of their, uh, their effort and, and time fighting spam and making sure that their algorithm is as best as it can be to show the, uh, the best search results in their, uh, on their website. So they hire some of the smartest people to fight spam. So it's really a losing battle to try to trick Google. That's kind of the, the key takeaway here because um, Google's whole business model depends on showing the best search results. Now with that in mind, over the years, Google has made a ton of updates to their algorithm. And these are important, uh, again, because uh, each of these algorithm updates uh, was made to fight people uh, trying to trick Google, essentially. And the first one here is called the Panda Update. This was to remove websites that gave what's called a bad user experience. So if your website does not have, let's just say, uh, a good user experience, a, a, a easy to use navigation, um, 
then you're going to be less likely to to rank high in Google. That's because of this this Panda update. They were trying Google was trying to get rid of websites that are, again didn't deserve to be ranked high. This next update was the Penguin update because again Google's algorithm looks at how many other websites are linking to your website. This was uh, Google's response to businesses going out and getting links from from websites that uh, were were basically low quality. They were irrelevant uh, websites linking to them, and in some cases, businesses took it a step further and actually created their own blogs that then linked to, to their websites. So they were creating other websites for the sole purpose of linking to their website to then help them rank higher in Google. Google caught on to that whole scheme and released the Penguin update and it's really important to to, to not go out and get uh, what I'll call low quality links to your site. We'll talk more about that soon. The next update was Google Plus. This is Google's social media Site. It's basically their response to Facebook and how, uh, how big uh, and popular Facebook is. And that really highlights the importance of social media for SEO. And last here would be the Hummingbird update. This was fairly recently, uh, fairly recently uh, Google made this big change to their algorithm. And basically they, they can now understand context and synonyms. So to you and me, if uh, I type in uh, food, best food near me, that uh, that obviously means I'm looking for uh, a restaurant nearby, and more specifically, I'm looking for a restaurant in, let's say, Flatiron, Manhattan, because that's where my office is. Uh, but for a algorithm, so a computer program, that's not super obvious because you have to understand context and synonyms. You have to know that best food actually means I'm looking for the best restaurant. So that's basically a synonym. And nearby, you have to under understand the context of that and know that that really translates to what is near my location right now. So that's actually pretty complicated, but Google does know how to do that now. All right, so there's three old school tactics that you must avoid based on uh, that history of Google now. And the first one is over-optimized web pages. And really the key takeaway here is when you're writing um, and, or creating pages on your site, you want to make sure you're writing naturally. Uh, my recommendation is to not even think about the Google algorithm when you're writing the copy on your page and instead think about your ideal prospect who would actually be hiring you and that's how you want to be writing your pages. So, so right naturally uh, because of the, the Panda update I mentioned earlier, if you write just for Google's algorithm, that'll likely just get you into some more trouble than it will actually help you. And that brings me to this concept of keyword stuffing. You may have actually, if you've done any research in SEO, you might have come across the term keyword density, and that's the measure of how many times a keyword is mentioned on a page. <laughs> Again, I, I urge you not even to think about keyword density. Uh, when you start thinking about that, that tends to mean you're going to try to do what's called keyword stuffing or stuff a keyword onto a page unnaturally. And when Google thinks that you're writing unnaturally, and just putting keywords on the page unnaturally, that's going to hurt your rankings. So definitely don't want to do that. I recommend you aim for uh, 500 or more words on the page. I'm emphasizing words, not uh, images on the page. Um, so Google needs to actually see that you have words on a page. And the, the reason for 500 or more is because Again, Google's trying to rank the best web page available online. And pages that have more words tend to have more information, are a little bit more robust. Uh, and it's hard 
uh, for Google to have confidence in showing a page that just doesn't have a lot of content on it because that's not likely to satisfy the searcher. And finally, it comes down to providing valuable information. So put yourself in the shoes of your prospect that's actually making uh, or actually searching for the keyword you're trying to rank for and, uh, and make sure you're providing the best uh, information that that person would want to find when they're doing that search. All right, the second old school tactic you want to avoid is what's called self-created links. I already mentioned this earlier. <clears throat> First and foremost, you don't want to buy links. Uh, that's actually uh, against Google's um, terms of service in terms of, uh, you know, they, they're not going to count a link if they know that you're paying for it. You also don't want to get links from irrelevant websites. So I, I mentioned earlier, uh, businesses were, you know, building their own blogs to, to link to their own website. Uh, they were also going out and just getting links wherever they could. So if, uh, you know, you have an event planner uh, focused website, it doesn't really make sense to then go out and get a link from, uh, <clears throat> from you know, a, a website that's focused on baseball or, or football. You know, it doesn't really... Um, they're not relevant, not not related in any way. Google knows that, and Google's probably going to look at that and say, "Hey, this is a a red flag. These guys are are just trying to trick uh, the algorithm to to get them ranked number one." Next is something called anchor text. If you've ever clicked on a link, then you know uh, they typically look like this example here, this blue underlined phrase here, event planner, that is called, uh, in this case, a hyperlink or a link. <clears throat> and that phrase, event planner, is what's called the anchor text. So the words that are actually linked, and if you clicked on that, it would then go to uh, your website. So that's anchor text. Google reads the anchor text, and based on what that phrase is, uh, they determine that uh, you're relevant for that phrase. And once you know that, then it makes sense that you would then want to go out and get a lot of links with your keyword as the anchor text. But uh, unfortunately, business owners took that a step too far, and some businesses <clears throat> would then go out and basically get all the, their links with the same exact keyword. And that's just extremely... Um, unnatural. That would never really happen in, in real life. Uh, if, if I was to link to your website and then another business would link to your website, we would most likely use a different phrase as the anchor text. <clears throat> Google knows that. So if they see that the majority of your links have the exact same anchor text, that's again going to be a red flag and will likely just, just get you into trouble. And what this comes down to so you don't want to create your own links. You want to focus on sharing content or having really good information on your site that people would naturally want to link to. And we'll talk more about that soon. And finally, the third old school SEO tactic you want to avoid is what's called unnecessary SEO pages. And this is re related to the Hummingbird update I mentioned earlier. You want to create just one page for a handful of very similar keywords. <clears throat> I'll give you some examples. Let's say you wanted to rank for event planner in NYC and NYC event planner. So those are two distinct keywords. They're different phrases. Uh, in the past, it would actually help you to have separate pages and you would optimize one for event planner in NYC, and then you'd have a separate page for NYC event planner. And that was actually a, a valid tactic, but now you don't want to do that. You want to just create one page. Google understands synonyms and context, and they can figure out that someone searching for event planner in NYC 
is looking for the exact same thing as someone searching for NYC event planner. And whenever that's the case, you want to just have one page on your site for those uh, particular keywords. Here's some predictions about where SEO is going. So I looked, gave you the, the brief history where, where it has been, where SEO has been, and now here's where SEO is going. So SEO will, or Google will definitely continue to fight SEO spam. Um, the examples here, keyword stuffing, unnatural inbound links, unnecessary pages for similar keywords, those will all get you into trouble. You also want to be aware that mobile and local signals are rising in importance. Just if you're not already aware of this, mobile um, mobile usage of Google is actually has surpassed desktop usage of, of Google. So more people are searching in Google.com on their mobile devices versus their desktop computers. And I also predict mo social signals will. Uh, become more and more important. And that's why I believe uh, Google is investing so heavily in Google+. Plus. I mentioned this earlier, so our key takeaway, SEO is not about tricking Google, it's more about partnering with Google to help their users find exactly what they need. Because again, Google depends on that search ad revenue and because of that, they want to make sure they're providing their users the best experience, giving them exactly what they want. So if you want to get your website to rank high in Google, you have to make sure you're giving Google exactly what their users want. And you'll see this more <clears throat> when I get to the five steps. The SEO really, start, it's starting to resemble more and more the real world. Uh, when it, when Google first came out in the in the early days of search engines. It was it was easy to manipulate the search results, and you could really write the copy on your page for search engines. Those days are really gone now, and uh, and you and you want to again you want to write naturally on your websites, and in terms of SEO resembling the real world. In the real world, you want people talking about you. You want a lot of buzz, and that's also true online. The websites that will rank high in Google have a lot of buzz online, uh, whether that's social media or having other websites linking to them. <clears throat> that's considered, uh, you know, other other websites basically uh, talking about that particular website. Here's a great quote from Wayne Gretzky. A good hockey player plays where the puck is, and a great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. So if you want to be successful with SEO, you need to understand where SEO is going. And that's why I went through the, the brief history of Google, as well as the SEO predictions. So now you have a better understanding as far as you know the evolution of Google, as well as where uh, Google is headed and how they will likely be updating their algorithm <clears throat> and you can use that information to basically stay ahead of the curve. All right, so now let's dive into the five rules. And uh, I also call these the five R's to help you uh, help you remember it. The first R here is research. And by research, I mean keyword research. And the tool I recommend you use here is called Google's Keyword Planner Tool. If you go to google.com and literally just search Keyword Planner Tool, it should be the first result. <clears throat> and this tool, you want to think of it like a thesaurus. You're going to type in some of the keywords that you think people are searching, like event planner, uh, event planning business, event planning company. Those are some obvious keywords that you might type in and then you'll click search, and then Google will tell you how many times those keywords are in fact searched every month, and then if you scroll down, you'll see additional relevant search phrases. 
and those are other keywords that Google knows people are searching that are related to the keywords that you typed in along with again how many times those keywords are searched each month so the key here when you're using this tool you're trying to find keywords that are searched obviously so <clears throat> what you're going to look at is the search volume and make sure it's greater than zero if Google's telling you there's zero search volume that means basically nobody is is searching for that particular uh, keyword for that phrase so it doesn't really make sense to optimize your website and try to rank for those keywords you want to find keywords that have search volume greater than zero and then once you find those keywords there's going to be a lot of relevant keywords but not all of them will have what's called buying intent this is a, uh, a critical concept because there's two types of keywords there's research intent and there's buying intent and with research intent keywords people are more likely just doing research uh, in this case about uh, planning an event uh, and I actually have an uh, example there so how to plan an NYC party so that's a, a great example of a research type keyword they're most likely just trying to learn kind of the ins and outs of planning an NYC party they might even be researching costs and uh, different different location options versus a buying intent keyword is the other example here which is event planning company in NYC that person is more likely going to hire an event planning company than someone typing in how to plan NYC party so that's a key distinction because when you're doing your research uh, I didn't check out these exact keywords but you will find a lot of research intent keywords have a lot of search there's more people searching for them so the natural inclination is hey I want to try to rank my website rank high for those keywords but you'll actually generate more business and more clients if you optimize for the keywords that have more buying intent even though they have less search each month and then finally it's always a good uh, time to stop and just make sure you deserve to be number one for that keyword there might be a keyword that has a lot of search and it might actually have buying intent but uh, you need to make sure that you actually offer that information that product or that service otherwise it's going to be a, a, a big uphill battle All right, so that's the first R keyword research the second step here second rule is relevance and more specifically we're talking about website relevance this is really marketing 101 you're trying to match the message on your site to the market so what they're searching for you want to pick one page on your site for each of your uh, target keywords or group target keyword groups so uh, you might remember previously I mentioned very similar keyword phrases you want to group together so that would be a keyword group and you would just have one page you would then optimize for that particular keyword group you're probably asking what does it mean to optimize well this is what it means you want to use your target keyword on or in the web page title that's a, a critical part of your web page called the title of the page or the title tag and if you have a web developer they would be able to edit that very easily uh, if you're using WordPress it's very easy to edit the title of the page that's a critical element on the page it tells Google what that page is about and whether or not it's relevant for that keyword and then the other area is what's called your headers in in HTML that's your h1 h2 h3 and again if you have a web developer <clears throat> that's going to be very easy for them to either add some headers or edit the headers on the page if you if you, you use a WordPress site you can um, 
uh, it works similar to Microsoft Word. You'll just highlight if the, uh, the the sentence or a couple words, and then you change it from uh, paragraph to uh, header. And that again is a key element on the page because Google is going to look at the title to see whether or not your page is relevant for the keyword, and then they'll also look at the headers as another signal signal to say whether or not you're relevant for that keyword. And last but not least, they also obviously read the body copy on the page. So that's just all the words that are on the page. Google's going to read all of that uh, and then, again, determine whether or not you're relevant for the keyword you're trying to rank for. Here's the golden rule of relevance. You really want to create a web page that you yourself would want to find if you were the one searching for that particular keyword. And that's a, a great exercise to do. Uh, it's a great copywriting exercise from a sales perspective to just put yourself in the prospect's shoes and, uh, and think through, you know, if they're searching for that keyword, let's say at the event planning company in NYC, if, they're, if you're the one doing that search, what would you actually want to find on the page once you did that search and clicked on the, the result in Google? And that's what you want to make sure you put on your page. Okay, so that's, we've just gone through research and, and relevance. That basically gets you into the game. You now have a page on your site that's relevant for a keyword. But there's likely going to be millions of other websites that are relevant for that particular keyword. And Google will look at your reputation to determine how you're going to stack up against the millions of other websites that could rank high or rank on the first page of Google. <clears throat> so again, I'll use the real world analogy here. And when you think about your own real reputation, uh, a lot of times that comes down to who you hang out with. So it's reputation by association. And if you want to have a strong reputation, you want to be hanging out with other people that have strong reputations. On the flip side, if you're hanging out with a lot of people that uh, don't have good reputations, that's a negative reputation by association. And that same thing can happen online. And that, again, I'll use that same example. If you're getting links from websites that are, are irrelevant or just low quality websites, then that's a negative signal. And it tells Google that uh, you, you probably shouldn't be ranking high in the search results. <clears throat> and then finally, I mentioned this before, you want to focus on attracting links versus buying or, or just going out and trying to create the links to your site. All right, now that you know the first three rules or those first three steps, I want to talk about those two tactics that you can use to get ranked in as little as 30 days. And the first tactic is called piggyback SEO. And what you're going to do is piggyback on other what I'm calling high authority or strong reputation websites. Uh, two examples here that most people are familiar with are YouTube, that's a popular video sharing site that Google actually owns, and PR Web is a press release tool that you can use to syndicate press releases, and that has a, a high authority or uh, strong reputation. And to use, use uh, piggyback SEO, you're going to publish content with your target keyword in the title of the page. So if it was a YouTube video, the title of the YouTube video would include the keyword that you're trying to rank for. <clears throat> or if it was an article, the article title would have the keyword that you're trying to rank for. I'll show you an example here so you see how this works. If you search how to create a Google AdWords campaign, uh, at least when I did this search, this website here, kissmetrics.com, ranked number three. And that's actually an article that I wrote 
and published on the KISS Metrics blog. And you can see the title of that article is How to Create a Profitable Google AdWords Campaign. So it's very similar to that keyword that is uh, being searched in Google. So it has, uh, it's very relevant. That was the second step. We've basically guaranteed that it's relevant because we put the keyword as the title of the page. And then we, we already know it has a strong reputation because we're publishing this on a website that already has a strong reputation. So we're piggybacking on the reputation of another website. This is a great tactic to, uh, to get something ranked in Google, especially if you have a new website, because it's going to be very hard um, when you're just starting out and you have a, a brand new domain. Uh, Google naturally doesn't trust brand new domains, uh, so it can take a while to build up the reputation of that, that new site. So here's another example, just Google AdWords campaign. Uh, that phrase is also in the title, so it is relevant. You can see it ranking number three, just under, <coughs> excuse me, the two uh, Google websites. So it's basically the best non-Google-owned website. <coughs> so the, the keyword is in the title, it's highly relevant. And again, in the domain kissmetrics.com has a strong reputation already. So we can just piggyback on that and publish an article on that website. I get, a, I get asked all the time, how does that help our website? Well, what happens is people will, will search in Google, uh, find this article, they will read it, and then that article naturally has links back to our website. So you can uh, get your website or your content, your article to rank high, and then people will click on it, uh, read that article or watch that video, and then you have links from that content over to your site where then they can learn more uh, and actually turn into a lead or a sale. All right, tactic number two to get ranked in 30 days is what's called local SEO. And this is highly relevant for event planning businesses that want to attract local clients. So local SEO is uh, just a, it's a subset of search engine optimization or, or SEO, and we're specifically talking about people searching and looking for a local business. So a lot of the examples I used, uh, event planner in NYC or NYC event planner, those are locally focused searches. And when that happens, you've probably noticed Google shows a map on the first page of Google, and they show the locations of the nearby businesses. <clears throat> so what we're doing here is getting your business to show up in that map on the first page of Google. And you can see some of the stats, 20% of searches are local, 40% of mobile searches are local, and 97% of uh, people search for local businesses. The three steps are the same with a slight twist. So you still want to do your keyword research, and then you still want to make your Google My Business profile relevant. Uh, and by that, you're going to uh, make sure that you're selecting the right categories. And then step three is to build up your Google My Business reputation, which uh, means that you need to have online reviews. Everyone knows what online reviews are but you might not know what citations are. And citations are a mention of your business name, address, and phone number on another website online. Uh, most obvious places to get citations are business directories. So if you are listed in Best of the Web, that's a, a directory online. If you're listed in Yelp, uh, everyone knows Yelp. Um, that would be a citation for your business. And if you have a lot of citations that uh, are showing your exact name, address, and phone number, and it all matches up and it's consistent, that helps your rankings in the local search results. Just to prove that you can get ranked super fast, 
here's a quote from Barney. He said, about a month ago, I started going through the local SEO steps. I've noticed my Google rankings moving up, and right now I'm at the number one position for my most important keyword in my area. I'm now receiving phone calls for my listing, and I just started working on a project that came in directly from Google Plus Local. All right, so what have we learned? <clears throat> we went through the three R's, research, relevance, reputation. I went through two tactics to rank in 30 days or less, piggyback SEO and local SEO. And now my favorite R is revenue, because SEO is not about getting your business to rank high in Google. It's about generating leads and sales. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there's three key factors when it comes to actually generating revenue from your SEO. You need to make sure you have compelling website copy. That's why I mentioned earlier, you really want to be focused on writing the copy on your website for your ideal prospects, not for Google. You want to make sure you have social proof. By that, I mean having testimonials and reviews on your website. And you want to have a strong call to action. That's what a CTA is. It's just an acronym for call to action. And that's some kind of offer on your site where you're getting uh, website visitors to take action. That could be to call you, complete a form, come to your actual office, whatever it is you want them to do. The second bullet there is called a lead magnet, and that's typically just a free report. If you go to MainStreetROI.com, you'll see right on our homepage, we have a free report, uh, the Internet Marketing Survival Guide. The reason we have that is because the vast majority of visitors going to any website are not ready to take action. They're not ready to call you, they're not going to schedule an appointment or come to your office. With that in mind, you, what you can do is offer them a free report and then get their email address in exchange for that free report. And that free report is what we call a lead magnet. It attracts leads for your business and then you or your sales team can then follow up with those leads via email to convert those leads into sales. And then the third factor here is that the prospective customers are searching what I call buying intent keywords. And that you're, that you're ranking high in Google for buying intent keywords in the first place. So that really circles back to the first R, which is research. You want to make sure you're targeting keywords that are ultimately going to get people to your website that are looking to make a purchase. And finally, you have to track your return on investment. And to do that, I recommend everyone installs Google Analytics. It's a free tool. You just add some code to your website, and then Google Analytics will track where all of your visitors are coming from and whether or not they are actually contacting you uh, by you know, completing a form on your site. So you can actually track how many leads you're getting from your search engine optimization. All right, the fifth R is responsibility. Ultimately, that's identifying who is responsible for your SEO. You need to realize that SEO is not a set it and forget it strategy. And I recommend you only delegate your SEO after you understand the basics. And that's why I walked through uh, a lot of the basics on this presentation, because at this point, you now have a, a good foundation to understand how SEO works. You understand uh, that you need to do research, make your website relevant, and then build up a strong reputation online. Understanding those three steps uh, allows you to then uh, be able to delegate the work to get that actually done in your business. Uh, lastly here is a great picture. I don't know how I found this. Those are not my kids. Uh, but the, the important takeaway here is that uh, a lot of people get scared of Google updates. They think, oh no, uh, Google's going to make an update and I'm going to lose all my rankings. But uh, you really want to think 
and have the mindset that Google updates are opportunities for you to jump up in the rankings. Because if you're following best practices and all the, the steps I went through today, then that will position your website to move up when Google makes new updates because all the businesses that are not following best practices are going to actually lose their rankings and drop down. That's going to open up spots for you to then uh, increase your rankings. All right, I promised everyone a gift, and that is a, a special SEO bundle for attending today. It's going to be two step-by-step -step video training courses. The first one is the complete SEO tune-up, and that's going through the process that our analysts do for our clients when a, a new client comes on board. So this is the, the first thing we do. We do a, what's called an SEO tune-up just to get the website uh, set up correctly so that Google knows it's relevant for all of the, the best keywords. The second video training course is called the Local SEO Formula. And that is a training course that goes through all of the steps to get your business to show up on the first page of Google in the, the map results. So when someone's searching for uh, event planner nearby, <coughs> Google's going to show the map results and the local SEO formula walks through how to get your business to show up high in, uh, in, in those maps. And we also include an SEO audit and 30 minute consultation. And you can see, you can actually go to our site, we sell both of those courses for $97 each and the audit is $300 so it's total value of $494 and you can actually get that for only $97 for attending today. And The URL is MainStreetROI.com forward slash SEO dash bundle and I will be showing that on the last slide if you don't uh, if you don't write that down. Now if you're not interested in training I do want to offer everyone a uh, free SEO consultation if you wanted to speak to one of our marketing advisors. We can actually uh, walk through you know, how we could help you. <clears throat> so I understand not everyone uh, wants to do it them themselves, and the training is great if you do want to do the SEO in-house or you yourself just want to do this. Um, the, the training will get you up to speed. If you don't want to do it yourself, I did just show a poll, and uh, if you want to have a call with one of our marketing advisors, we'll be able to walk through our services and see if it's a good fit for you. So I'll let that up for uh, just five seconds while I get a drink. All right, I'm going to close that down now. And the last slide here before Q&A. I just wanted to show you a quote from Jordan. Uh, one of our clients said, Main Street ROI produces results. Working with these guys has improved my business, and they have made it easy. They're a pleasure to work with, high communication, and have my best interest in mind. Most importantly of all, I never feel like I'm talking to a hired gun when I email these guys. I value and consider them a part of my team. All right, and with that, we'll do Q&A. And let me pull up a Q&A box here. So again, if you're new to go, to go to webinar, there is a box. It should be in the upper right corner labeled questions. <clears throat> you can just type your questions right in there, click send. I'm actually the only one that sees those questions, uh, so don't worry about uh, sharing anything with the, the entire audience. <clears throat> I'll get those questions, and I'm happy to address those during this Q&A. I do see Brenda wrote in something here. Uh, it's actually fairly long, so bear with me. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Brenda said, we want to redo our website as it is pretty old so that we can get Google re requirements on there and automatically help us move up in Google rankings. When we hire someone, how do we know that he's good for us? Sample websites only shows us the outside picture. <coughs> so it's a great question. 
Uh, I'm a little biased. I would say uh, you should definitely talk to us. Um, basically, in my experience, um, uh, a lot of web developers, and this, obviously I'm painting with broad strokes here, but a lot of web developers will claim that they know SEO um, when in fact they're, they're basically just saying that because it is a buzzword now and most businesses are, aren't even going to hire a developer unless they claim that they understand SEO. So it is a little bit scary when you're trying to find a web developer because it's hard to know, do they really know SEO? Uh, so with that in mind, uh, what I generally recommend is uh, talking to an SEO expert or a company that specializes in SEO uh, and getting their help and what you can do is actually work with an SEO company in combination with a web development company and that way you're ensuring that your site is going to be set up properly because there is a right and wrong way to develop a website and if it's not structured properly what happens uh, and we come across this a lot we'll uh, work with a new client that just got their website redesigned and we'll find out that it's just not structured properly that it doesn't have the right pages on the site uh, because if you remember, step two is to have a relevant web page. Uh, if you don't have a relevant web page, then you then have to create that page and uh, incorporate it into the website. Gene, uh, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. Gene said, I've heard you should search anonymously for your business. How do you suggest one does that? It's a great question. Google customizes search results based on your location and previous search history. So if you use Chrome, open up a uh, incognito window. You just go to um, uh, the, the Chrome tools and one of the options is to open an incognito window. And that is a great way to search in Google without any uh, history skewing the search results. <clears throat> Pamela said, interested, but plan on changing website host. Should I wait? Uh, definitely, we should talk um, in terms of uh, what you're planning to do. I just kind of mentioned that to Brenda. Uh, we could collaborate with uh, whatever it is or whoever you are working with to migrate your website. Um, Jean said, how do you get content shared or get links? That's a great question. Um, the basic, pro there's lots of ways to get links, but um, a, a common way to do it is to have a blog on your website and to have a really good article about a particular topic. Um, <clears throat> let's just say how you know ten ten tips to make your uh, wedding a success. Uh, I'm just completely making this up, but let's just say that's the article. Um, and you know, it's let's say it's just one of the the best articles out there on that particular topic. You can then go out to other websites that are relevant and that would be interested in that article, and contact them and see if they want to link to it. Maybe they want to reference it in another article that they already wrote. That's one tactic. Another way is to actually approach other websites and offer to write articles for their blog, and that's considered a, a guest blog article. Those are just, just two of the many tactics. Pamela said, what about multiple websites? Um, Pamela, I would need clarification on that. Uh, and feel free to email info at MainStreetROI.com, or uh, if, if you want to have a call, that might be easier. Marvin said, how does Google rankings handle home-based businesses that prefer not to put their home address for all to see? It's a great question. If you have a service area and you go to your customers, you specify that in your Google My Business profile. That's one of the options when you set it up. You can either specify that people come to your office, in which case Google will show your address, or you say you go to your customers and then Google does not show your address. 
Uh, Ashley said, how can I correct company information on different directories to optimize Google searches? That's a great question, and that's uh, part of our process. If we find any incorrect information, uh, that's a, a critical thing to fix. I already mentioned citations. You want to have um, accurate and consistent information <clears throat> across all business directories. And the best way to fix that is to actually go to those directories and clean them up one by one. <coughs> Let me just do a ch time check. I, had, I am one minute over, and I forgot I was supposed to kick this back to Molly. So, Molly, any any last words? If you're if you're still on. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. Um, all right. Thanks, Phil. That was an awesome presentation. I know I took some stuff away from that, but I'm looking forward to implementing. Um, and then I just want to thank everybody who's still on the line who stayed until the end because I know that time is the most valuable asset for entrepreneurs and, you know, everybody who's stuck on till the end. Uh, it just says a lot that you're serious about your business and doing what it takes to make the leap in your business that you want to see. And so I totally appreciate you all for staying on for the full hour and for all of you um, for being members of the Event Planners Association community. And then I just wanted to make sure that um, I offered every, everyone on the line the opportunity to continue to deepen your relationship with us um, and take advantage of our new mastery level of membership. Uh, that's something that we rolled out earlier this year, and it was met with a lot of success. Um, but we only open it up twice a year because we devote a lot of our own resources to supporting members of that community. Um, but I did want to extend the invitation to everybody who's on the line today to be able to join that. Um, we're going to keep it open until Friday uh, just for you guys, just so that you can continue to kind of capitalize on the momentum that you got from this call and continue to get the support that you feel like you need um, to continue to, you know, make steps in your business and continue to grow it. Um, so I'm going to send out an email with a link to the replay. Um, of this webinar so that you guys can check it out again if you want to and you just have access to all the slides and everything and then a link to our mastery membership as well um, and you should get that um, pretty soon and I just I know that um, Phil feels pretty passionate about supporting people who want to continue to grow their business and I know that we do too so if there's anything that we can do to you know help you guys out or answer any questions um, we're happy to take those um, so that's kind of all from me. Um, look for an email from me with a link to the replay and our mastery membership and um, a couple of other cool um, bonuses and goodies that um, Phil is also going to send your way to. So thanks, Phil. Perfect. Thanks, Molly. Um, I guess my final word would be just uh, I saw my reminder here to please complete the brief survey after the webinar. <laughs> Once I close it down, you'll get redirected. One of the questions is uh, ideas for future webinars, and we do review those. And now is actually a, a great time to take those suggestions because we'll be planning the 2017 calendar. So with that, I think uh, we're good. If you're good, Molly. Yep, all good over here. Perfect. Thanks again, Molly, for organizing this. And uh, yeah, like, like well, Molly said, we'll stay on and. Yeah, I hope to do some more like this in the future um, for you guys also. So yeah, fill that out. Let us know how we can help you. All right, great. Take care, everyone. Bye.